This is part two of our interview with Bob Berg, the author of The Go-Giver and numerous other books. Today, we're going to talk about how to turn one book into a series of books, the pitfalls, the do's, the don'ts, what to watch out for. So stay tuned and let's welcome Bob Berg. Now, let's transfer to another topic of the fact that The Go-Giver created a whole series here. You have, uh, well, tell us the names of all the books that you spawned from The Go-Giver and how you built your empire from there. Yeah, and there's a big lesson in there, too, of what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about both. <laughs> <laughs> so, so first, after The Go-Giver had its initial success, and it got off to a pretty good start, and because like you said, we, we did kind of have a platform. Uh, John and I both knew a lot of people that were influencers who can, I'm not talking about, TikTok influencers or, or, but I'm just saying people who had a lot of influence that, that could help get the book out and, and so forth. And, and so that helped us get off to a, a really good start. Um, and so the, the publisher uh, asked us to do, a, well, we got a lot of, uh, of emails, first of all, asking, well, you know, how would a go giver do this or that? Or can you give examples of this or that, whatever? Well, you know, when you listen to the marketplace, they'll generally tell you, you know, what, what they want and, and where to go. And so uh, the, the publisher asked us to do two more books. One would be a how to book. And that would be more of an application book, let's say, of the go giver. And that was go givers sell more. That was the only one in the series that's not a parable. And so, um, you know, we took stories from people who wrote to us to tell us what they did after they read the book that helped them to really accomplish great success. But we also took stories of people who were doing these things long before they ever read the book and were in, you know, and and had great success. So that was a so was, now here's where the mistake one came. Mm -hmm. So the next one was going to be a book on leadership, which would be another parable. And it would be, you know, basically how do go givers lead, you know, to take the, the which the go giver was really for entrepreneurs and salespeople, although many people use it as a leadership book. This one was going to be on leadership. What we did is we we titled the book. It's not about you. Why? Because law number three from the go giver, the law of influence was that your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first, not in a self sacrificial way, a doormatty way, or, or martyrish way, but just that you're always focused on others, which is what leaders do, which is what influencers do. They focus on how they can. So we figured because of that, fans of the go giver would buy, would tie right into that and they'd say, it's, oh, it's not about you. That, that's like a natural tie in. Well, the marketplace stayed away in droves. Mm. The book did not sell. And I'm telling you, it was as good as the first one. And it did not sell. And for two years, we're trying to figure out why this thing doesn't sell. And one day I'm on a phone call with, with Tom Ziegler. He's uh, Zig Ziegler's son. And Tom does a wonderful job of carrying on, on his father's legacy. And and, and I, we were talking about that. I said, you know, Tom, I've, I just never understood why that book has, hasn't sold. You know, we think, and, and he said, well, you know, Bob, it's interesting, the title, it's not about you. If I'm a consumer thinking about buying this book, if it's not about me, why would I want to buy it? <laughs> I thought, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. But there's also something else. One reason The Go-Giver sold so well is that many people bought it as gift books. And giving a person a book with the title The Go-Giver is a compliment. Giving a person a book with the title It's Not About You not so much a compliment. It's like giving somebody a <laughs> bottle of scope mouthwash. You know, what's the person <laughs> trying to tell me, right? So no, so we went back to Adrian Zakheim, the publisher, and he allowed us to do something that most publishers will not do. He allowed us to retitle the book. And we made a couple little changes in it, plus added a QA and a and, and guide at the back like we did with the original Go-Giver when we revised that. Um, and, um, and called it the Go-Giver Leader, which was now, you know, on brand. You know, mm -hmm. so trying to be clever and trying to come out, you didn't work. So, right. yeah. And, and you reinforced your brand by having the exactly. go-giver as the title. Then you went to the go-giver marriage. You know, that's a well, little. Well, that, well, well okay. next was the go-giver influencer. Okay. That was the third one. And that was more how, that was more about people skills. Right. Mm -hmm. and so, so the go-giver influencer. Uh, but then now John and Anna 
who have a wonderful marriage, right? Uh, they uh, did the go giver marriage, and they were nice enough to ask me if I wanted to be, you know, uh, a, I guess it would be a tri author instead of a co author, right? You know those things more than I do. But I'm the, and I, I said, you know, I, I appreciate that, guys, but you know, I'm not married. So, you know, it's, there's probably not a lot of credibility for me, you know, being one of the authors on a book on marriage. And besides, you guys can do this stuff, you know, and they, they did a beautiful job. So, you know, it's half parable and half how to. And there's even a parable within the parable. So, you know, it's like, uh, but that's just the, the two of them did just such a, a magnificent job with that. So, so yeah. So, so you extended the brand. Do you feel the brand helped to sell the books just because it was the brand? People said, if it's if it's the go-giver, it's by Bob and John, it's going to be good. I want the next one. Whatever they come out with, I'm going to buy. Or yeah, I mean, I, marketing? I think that helps a lot. It does. Uh, but I, I also know, and, and it disappoints me a little, but I've heard other authors say the same thing and that you know, the, that there's a lot of people, as much as we market it and everything that still don't even know there are books aside from the original go-giver. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it's not, but I've heard that from other authors too, who had this like, you know, big, big hit. And then they did spinoffs of, of it. And that, you know, some people just, you know, it's a, they'd say, you know, here 10 years later, I didn't know you had another you know, well, we've been publicizing it for 10 years now, you know, but uh, it just, just kind of how it is. But yeah, we know that a lot of the ones who bought those other books were because they enjoyed the first one and, and uh, you know, wanted to see what would happen. So, um, so we're grateful for that, but there's also that disappointment that, you know, people just don't know because, you know, you, you, you're proud of what you do and you, you, you'd like for people to have, uh, to have read it. Sure. Right. Your, your latest book, uh, Streetwise to Saleswise, uh, I just my, got, got my copy a few weeks ago. I, it's only been out for a month or two. So you 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 didn't do the go-giver brand on this one. Tell us about yeah. what was the thinking behind this book. And you also have another co-author as well. So uh, yeah. let's let's go through that process too quickly. Yes. Yeah. So this one is with Jeff West. Jeff was a client of mine back when he was a sales leader with a major, major insurance company. And we remain friends. And um, he had sent me his first book, his first parable that he wrote after he retired. Uh, he did really well in, in the business and he retired and uh, he speaks and, and, and so forth. But but he loves writing. He just loves writing. and He loves doing it in the form of a story. The interesting thing is he is a student of John David Mann's writing masterclass. So it, it still ends up being, you know, kind of a thing. But, uh, but Jeff has just, you know, he learned writing as he learned sales. Uh, he just became a student again. And he, he did a great, great job. And so um, we had taken some source material that I had. I had written an ebook, well, not an ebook, a manuscript for a how-to on answering objections, called it objection proof, um, but never did anything with it. I just, you know, you get busy, things just don't. And so, and, and so at one point I just said to Jeff, you know, we might as well uh, why don't we just do this in a parable if, if you'll, you know, be the writer and, and he loved the idea, but also Jeff, again, great salesperson, student of sales. He had been studying, uh, something called fusion points, which is something he developed based on study he had done. And he brought a lot of that into the book as well. So, um, so yeah, we, um, enjoyed that. And we published that through Jeff's publishing company that he, uh, that he came up with just to publish his own stuff. Great. Uh, one final question here. Um, the Go-Giver is taught in schools and businesses. Uh, how did that happen? Was it organic or did, or did you have it? Uh, did you consciously promote it that way? How, how did that happen? Well, with with schools, um, there was a, a, a gentleman by the name of Randy Stelter, a longtime educator at uh, Wheeler High in Valparaiso, Indiana. And he had, he wrote to John and me just saying uh, that he had been teaching it, you know, to his class, teaching, uh, you know, doing a, a, a class on it uh, every semester uh, to his, I think his junior class. And, uh, and we got to kind of know Randy and uh, well, then got to know him really well because I'm great friends with Randy's entire family, his wife and kids, grandkids now and everything. And same with John and, and Anna. And, uh, and so we said, you know, why don't you take this, what you put together? Cause he showed us some of what he put together in the curriculum. I said, just make a curriculum out of it. And, uh, and then, you know, John and I went through it with him, um, and so forth. But Randy did the heavy lifting on that. And, uh, and we just started having, you know, schools would kind of 
call us and or usually it was the individual teachers uh, although i think it's gone through a couple of s- school systems at this point but you know not to the degree that, that we'd love it to because we'd love you know uh, we'd love all the school systems to be teaching this to their their kids but certainly a, a, enough that it's you know hopefully made some kind of difference well bob you certainly made a lot of difference in a lot of people's lives all around the world thank you so much for being with us today and thank you so much for uh, everyone listening we have more than 200 other episodes of write your book in a flash with dan janelle on the youtube channel check them all out